Hey everybody, Kevin Yee here for you, and this is the Road to El Dorado cartoon talk review. The Road to El Dorado came back came out back in the day. I forgot who it was made. Uh, I heard that originally it was supposed to be like PG thirteen. Then they changed it to like PG, then TV PG. Like they kept changing it up and all the trailers and stuff, and it didn't really have its own identity. It came out beautiful animation, good voice cast, the music was good. It's a pretty nice story. It's about Tulio and Miguel. He's two like con artists and Spanish in like 1980, 18 something. It was whenever the Spanish started to go out and started to like take over lands and stuff. And they get mixed up in all these shenanigans and it culminates into the point where they find El Dorado. And the people in El Dorado mistake them as gods because they have like this mural of the gods that made El Dorado the city of gold. And they look just like the people. I mean, they look just like the gods in the mural. And the horse is big. like they were riding some sort of like lizard thing, and then they had a horse named Altiva with them, which was the bad guy's horse at first before he got a new one. And I guess the horse kind of looked like that dragon thing, whatever they were riding on. So they started to play the rules that they were gods. The only people that knew they really weren't gods was Cell. She's like the third main character. She's a person that lives in El Dorado, but she wants to go out and explore the world just like how Tulio and Miguel do. Tulio is the one in the blue. Miguel is the one in the red. Miguel is the uh, free spirit out to adventure. He believes anything someone tells him about like mystical stuff. Tulio is more grounded, a bit more realistic. I guess he can believe in it, but he's like, eh, it probably don't exist. He makes the plans in the group. Sorry, I thought I had a sneeze. He makes the plan in the group, and he somewhat geeks the girl, which is Cell, and she is somewhat of a con artist, too, like just like Tulio Miguel. Now, I thought it was okay for Tulio, because like, when they first met her, they like instantly knew she might cause some problems with us, so she's off limits. So, but Tulio started like getting with her, and that made Miguel mad. But I was like, I guess I kind of justified because when they first got to El Dorado, Miguel confessed that some other adventure they had, you know, some just some like little backstory stuff that he hooked up with some girl. I guess Tulio liked back in the day, and Tulio didn't find out. He just told him he was like, what? Why you? And then it cuts and it, the story keeps going, you know? So I'm like, okay, I guess that's kind of justified why he went with Cell. But kind of... <laughs> ah, I am so sorry. I sneezed, my bad. Uh, I don't, I can't edit this out. I'm so sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, two, my best song is The Trail We Blaze and uh, It's Tough To Be A God. That was two really good songs. Uh, the other people that didn't know they were gods were the chief. The chief, like, he was the main one, like, celebrating, like, hey, these, the gods are back. They came here. They're supposed to stay here for, like, a thousand years or whatever. But there was one point where they wanted to leave El Dorado on a big ship with all the gold so they can just go and adventure with the gold. And Miguel didn't really want to leave, you know, because El Dorado is a beautiful place with all these, like, weird creatures or cool Aztecs, like, mantles and stuff like you know it's a beautiful place he didn't want to leave so soon so he kept making excuses like oh this ro this boat isn't sturdy or we need more rope and he was like the chief was like so we need more rope to get like tons of rope and he just confessed like you know i, I didn't really i don't really want to leave and now nah, I, I didn't really get this as a kid but he says to air is human so i'm guessing he knows that they're human and this is just a whole charade I guess it makes his people happy to see that the gods are here, so he just plays along. And he sees that they're not bad people. Like he helped them out in the end when the bad guy, uh, Cortez, comes to invade El Dorado with, uh, with the chief's brother. Because the chief's brother is like a sorceress in that town. He finds out that they're not gods because during like a game, uh, Tulio hits Miguel in the face and he starts to bleed. And he's like, you know, God is a bleed. So he teams up with Cortex to come evade El Dorado when he goes into a whirlpool or whatever. It's, you know, it's kind of complicated. And, you know, that's how he's like, he's the, like him and Cortex are like the main bad guys. Anyway, like, he even, they even tried to help El Dorado out because they knew like all your bows and arrows and stuff are not going to stand any kind of chance against the guns and armor plates that Cortez has. So we need to help them out. Uh, those, yeah, they, yeah, those are the only people I didn't really know. They, I mean, that knew they were gods. Chell is a pretty good character, and she's a really good. I think she's even a better con artist than those two. Because they, I mean, she just took their, took his, uh, took their loaded dice, took Tulio loaded dice while it was in his vest, and he didn't even know. But that, that's that's really good. I really love this movie. I heard the box office didn't do it so well. I, I saw it the first time I saw it was when I was a kid. My grandma gave me this V VSH tape. Yeah, VSH tape. I put it in. 
and I kept confusing it with a tale of Desperado as a kid, that, that movie about the little mouse, because every time my mom would be like, what movie you want to watch? I'd always be like, The Road to El Dorado. No, I said The Road to Desperado. That's what I kept saying, instead of El Dorado, and I always mixed up until I finally got that DVD and was able to watch it, and it's on Hulu. Like, it's a good, beautiful, like, the animation holds up today. It's a good, beautiful movie, and it's about an hour, something minutes long. Uh, it just sucks that the box office didn't do too well. I heard it was because of the marketing and because they kept switching up from like PG-13 to other stuff. I heard they had to reanimate a bunch of stuff. Like it was like it was sort of a mess, but at the same time it wasn't. So uh, they, they just had a they were really confused and kind of mixed up on what the movie was supposed to be. That really sucks. Uh, thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, I don't know what the next cartoon talk will be. I love it. Oh yeah, and, uh, El Tivo. That was the horse that Cortez had <clears throat> that Cortez had at the beginning of the movie. But after they get captured by Cortez. Yeah, they get captured by him. When they escape his ship, the horse comes too. And then the horse is good and white. Then at the end of the movie we see another horse he has that's black. And El Tivo's white. So you know, like the good and bad parallels, I guess. You know, because yeah. Kinda racist. Uh you know the good the good and bad parallels, I guess. <clears throat> uh one of the funniest scenes. I, I, I love this scene. It was when um, I think like he was telling Miguel to, to stay low. Don't like draw attention to yourself. Please just stay in this like home palace that we're staying in. He goes away to sell Lixum goes away because he just he wants to spend time with Tulio, and Tulio has like a bunch of gold. And he was like, "Hey, where's Miguel?" <laughs> Shell goes, "I don't know. You don't know. Oh my god, bro, where is he? At? And he's like stumbling all over the gold like that. That was pretty funny. And when they were um. Right before they were running away from some guards, cause they like they, they played it up, like they're using loaded dice and they tricked these sailors. The guards come, they pretend that the other one was fooling one, like, oh I, I didn't know I played loaded. You gave me loaded 